start each presentation with this slide. Now, I love this. And this is big data is not the future, it is now. And that means that all of that information that we have out there, we have our technical tools. People are searching for listings out online. We have agent websites where they're gonna be looking for those listings. And all of that information goes places, right? It's in different places that we can use, but that's not in the future. Being able to use that information for our business isn't going to come down the road. It is now. And we, that's where BuySight is really going to help you is we're going to take all of that information that we're talking about, that we have access to, that people are interacting with online. We're going to put it into a usable place. Now, what if we could take all of that information that's out there on the internet and be able to use that that big data in real estate. Now, what would that look like? Now, the, the issue is that we have logins for everything, right? We have our CRM, we have our presentation tool, we have our agent websites. We know that there are people looking online at Zillow, at all those other things that we don't like to talk about. There's saved searches, there's web increase. So we know that all of that information is online, but it would be a full-time job just to check and see where all of that is. So that's the challenge, is having all of that information and seeing it in different places that we can use. Now, the solution is we take all of those information sources that we saw, and this is a bit of a review from last week, but we, we're, we're taking all of that. So the Zillow, who are going, who are potential buyers uh, in that Spacio app? We, who are all of those people that are out there searching online? Do we have in our CRM? So we're gonna take all of that information and we're gonna put it into a usable place. It's gonna go into that nice little funnel there and uh, we're gonna be able to see all of that great information and we're gonna show you how. And not only that, some of the biggest brokerages in the country are doing that. They're taking that big data, they're taking that information, and we're gonna put it in that usable place that you can now see that you're going to be able to use. And there are billions of signals out there, billions of data points that are going into the market, that are showing a reflection of the market. Who is searching for homes? Who is actively looking? Who's working with an agent? Those are all questions that we would like answers to because then we can use that for our information, right? If there are so many people searching on Zillow, well, if somebody's working with an agent, I know that they're probably going to be an active buyer. There's somebody that I, I want to get a hold of, especially if they're looking for a listing that I have. So the solution is that we're going to use all of that information. BuySight is gonna help you leverage that greatest untapped asset that we have, which is data. We're gonna help you capture those seller leads, win more listings, and close those deals quicker because again, we can answer those questions that our clients have. And that is who's gonna buy my home and how much is my home worth? Now, one thing I do like to point out at the beginning of these presentations is that even though we're called buy side, this is a great seller lead capture tool. So it's those seller leads that we're going to be able to draw in. And if you saw last week's webinar, which you will, uh, are still able to view, that is, it was the home valuation site and it was a way for people to get new leads. You get new seller leads just by sending out our home valuation site. And that is somebody can check out what their home is worth. So while you're working on transactions, you're working on closing the current two, three, four, ten 10 transactions that you currently have, new seller leads can be coming in to you. And we can also track those different buyers by people who are searching online, people that are working with other agents. And you'll be able to see that here in a minute. Now, really quickly, there is something I wanted to show you. And in a couple of weeks, we added a couple of more webinars to the end of uh, the four that we already had existing. And that is the coming soon listings and the quiet listings, which are non-MLS listings. So uh, there is a way for you to add those in. So if something hasn't hit the MLS yet, that pre-listing, uh, we will still want to add it in here so that people around the brokerage can still see that listing, right? I want to know, well, what's coming out? So maybe we can get this listing sold before it even hits the MLS. So we can see those. We can have our coming soon listings. And again, we can have those non-MLS listings, which we can search for inside of our dashboard. Now that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, and before we get started, I do want, before we jump into the product, I mean, I do want to share, if you haven't already, we have a Facebook community group called BuySide Insiders, which you can get to uh, by going to www.buysideinsiders.com. Or if you have any questions, you can always email us at support at getbuyside.com and you can talk to Todd uh, or David, who's a good friend of ours. So 
that is uh, the beginning here. Now let's go ahead and jump in. Now we're on our buy side dashboard. Now let me ask you this. I have another poll that's gonna come up. And that is, what do you think is the most important kind of lead? And we get different answers for this. And if you're looking out on the internet, most people will value those, or it appears that a lot of people value those the same. So what is more important to you as an agent? What do you think is more important, buyer or seller leads? Now, I've got about half of the people voted so far, and it's about 97% say seller, and that is the truth. Uh, now, getting those seller leads is so important, and so we're going to show you how we can get those seller leads. Okay, so this is our dashboard. Now, we've gotten the lead. We've we've gone through. Somebody has reached out to us from our home valuation site. Uh, they valued their home. They have some questions, and they say, you know what? Uh, I want to meet with you. They're not, they haven't quite signed on the dotted line yet, but let's go ahead and check out how we can do that. Now, we're going to take a look at our BMA, and that is our buyer market analysis. And here we go. So this is our buyer market analysis. Now, you may have heard of CMA, which is your comparative market analysis. Uh, and that is a great tool to use. And we're su not suggesting that this replace that. But the issue with a, a CMA is that it's all about the past. It's all of things that have already happened in the past. So we're going to use that tool to show them, uh, we'll want to price our listing right uh, and all that. But we also have another tool here, which is our buyer market analysis, where we can show them there are people actively looking for your listings. In fact, I have a number of them already set up. I have buyers that are looking for your exact home. So let me show you those. Now, I'm obviously not going to give you their name and phone number. I'll do that part. I'm the agent as soon as you sign on that dotted line. So let me show you how that works. Uh, we're going to go ahead and type in our address here. So there we go. So we're going to type, begin to type it in. We're going to click it off of that drop down menu and we're going to go to next. Now, it is going to ask us a couple of questions. And the first is details. So what, uh, what are the details of the home? Now, this does pull from public records. So do keep that in mind. It's not pulling from the MLS. It's not pulling from any of those other sites. It's pulling from public records. So if they have made any upgrades and it isn't in here yet, you can change that as the agent. So I can come in here and put three and a half baths if I'd like. This is actually my sister's house. So it's actually correct. I, I checked with her this morning just to make sure. But uh, we're going to go ahead and click next. And now we're going to set those property estimates. And again, if you saw the home valuation site, this was part of it. So if they saw that, if they came in through that home valuation site, we'll want to make sure that we give them that same information and speak to it when we're talking to them, when we have this report in front of them. So I'm going to use those same three valuations. And now some people do like to hide from Zillow and say, no, we're not going to take a look at that. We have a few others that we can use. We're not going to go ahead and use Zillow today. But you know what? We're going to include it because I like to tackle that head on. And you know why? It's because a lot of people do look at that. and They're going to come to you with that information. So we're going to take a look at that. And we have our estimates. So now you see that there is a ton of variability that we see in our uh, valuations here. So there is 786000 all the way up to one a uh, million and $92,000. So there is a big variability there. So I want to make sure that I'm using my expertise to show them what the actual low and high end estimates are. So just to show you, I can do this. So let's go ahead and do, uh, let's say 944 to, let's say, let's use the one that they had there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That might be too much. Nope, that's right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click next, and it's going to show you that range of featured buyers that we saw. And look, I've got six featured buyers in there. And we'll take a look at that on the report of who those people actually are and how I can leverage that. But I have my range of featured buyers here. Now, this is the range that I just added in. It's my 944 to 1.09. Now, if I want to try and capture a few more, we can go ahead and bend this out a little bit so I can say, find a few extra leads there. Now, it might not. Yeah, this still only says six, so we can go ahead and drag that back to my 944. But um, just to show your person, or if you wanted to do this as an exercise, you could always make that range a little bit bigger to see how many other featured buyers there could be. So we're going to go ahead and click generate that PDF and look what it's doing. It's generating. It's pulling from that public record, that buyer data, that generating report. Uh, it's going to download that report. So it's coming from all those different places. 
Now it does take a few minutes because it is pulling all from all of those different places, but you know what? I actually have one here. So we already downloaded. This is the same report that's downloading right now. Now we can go through this uh, and this is the report. There's six pages. And again, we can use this as a complement to our CMA presentation, but we're gonna show them this is how many people are looking for the home that you're currently trying to sell. So we have our real-time uh, market report. Now this image on top does come from the brokerage and this is the buy side realty brokerage, just so you know, it's our internal, uh, it's just something that we use to demo with. So that may not be the image that you have, there will be a custom one, but your branding is on here. So your name, who you are, your contact information. So if you give them this BMA, they have a direct line to you based off of that first page. Page number two is why would you want to use this, bro? Why would you want to use Buy Side Realty? Why would you want to sign on the dotted line with me? Well, let me tell you a couple of reasons why. Now, there's not too many points here. And again, these come from the brokerage. So you have a lot of great information that you can see and that they can see why they would want to use your uh, uh, branding. Now, here we go. So this is that report that just downloaded. We're going to go ahead and go to desktop and I can save that or I can go back here. I actually don't want the PDF just yet. Now I can view the report or I can create another one. And if I view, it's gonna open it just like we saw. So it's really that simple. So I've now generated it and you can take it, you can print it, you can send it to them digitally, which we'll show you in just a minute on how to do that. Uh, but that's it. So really you have your presentation in all these different forms. Let's go ahead and keep scrolling down here. So we have our real-time market report for this. And here's our real-time valuations. Now we get to speak to these. Right now, well, on that home valuation report that we talked about last week, they were looking at it on their own computer in their own living room. Well, let's speak to this now. Now, we want to price this right the first time, and we're actually going to get to that point in a second as well. But look at how much variability there is in each one of these. So these are estimates and they don't claim to be anything but that for example zillow they call it a zestimate now the the listing that we're currently looking at right now they just re-landscaped their backyard and put in a pool now how would zillow know that they wouldn't it's they they use an algorithm based off of what's going around but they're not walking the streets they're not looking into people's backyards so the the uh estimate of this particular listing will have gone up and Zillow won't have known about that. So we get to tell them, you know what, they, it is exactly what it claims to be, an estimate. So let's go ahead and use expertise instead to price your listing right the first time. And there's all of these benefits. It won't spend too much time on the market. It won't uh, go too quickly because we know that we underpriced it and somebody snapped it up for way less than it could have been. So we have all of those great talking points that we can show them off of these real-time valuation estimates. Now we keep scrolling down, we also have our buyer heat map here. Now we can show them how hot the market is in their particular area. Now I know that I'm in a uh, an active area, not the most active. Now we can see those dark red areas, that's where the most active areas are, but I'm in a pretty active area. And this is just showing them, again, we'll wanna price our listing right the first time, and it is important. Why? Because we aren't in that most, uh, active area you can see that it might sit on the mls for a while if you're in one of those areas or we could say you know what once those areas that are extremely active right now people are going to start looking into other areas once they get through a couple of listings and they don't win that particular listing and they don't see uh, any listings that they could. They're gonna start to spill over into your area. So we have all those great talking points for using our buyer heat map here. So even if I am in one of those yellow areas, I can still use this to say, you know what? We wanna be realistic about how we should price our listing, whether it's gonna be aggressive or not so much. Okay, so now we have our online activity for the last 90 days. Now, again, this is a demo account, so these numbers are really light. So I can see I've got seven here. This is our internal. Um, but what they're gonna see is something similar to what we saw on our HBS here, our home valuation site. So there is 1.2 billion people that are searching online. So I can see there's 302,000 searching in that school district, 59,000 that are searching in the school district within the same price and with the same bedrooms, 59,130 people that are now searching in that same school district 
in that home's price range and with that amount of bedroom. So I've got a ton of buyers out there that are looking for your exact home. And this is what it'll look like inside of your buyer report. So you can show them that there is a lot of activity out there for their listings. And again, we also have buy bedroom. So I can see that price range uh, for the 300,000 here. So in that range, but mine's up here. This is actually what I put it at. And there's 128,000 people searching in that price range, 35% of which are looking for that four plus bedrooms. Okay, so our last page here, our sixth page uh, is those potential buyers that we have. So I now can show them uh, who is looking for their house. And these aren't just clicks on a website. These are actual people. So these are folks that we can see that have, are looking for that home, featured buyers. So I know that all of these people are searching within our brokerage. So that's where these folks are. So if I'm looking for buyers, we'll take a look at how to find who these people are inside of your dashboard. These are actual people who are looking for a listing and are working with an agent. But the important part here isn't that I have six potential buyers or I have a hundred potential, how many ever are on this report. The point is that I know who they are. I know who these people are when I'm searching for these listings. Now I have a custom buyer ID here and this gets generated by us because we don't wanna give them their name and phone number, right? If, I, if they knew that, what would they need me for? that I, I have the buyers, I don't wanna give them away, I want them to sign on the dotted line so that they know that I'm the person that they're gonna sell with. So the point here is that we have six people that are looking for your listing today. I can show you those people today. So if you sign on the dotted line, I can have six people in the door. And the point here is that we're, if they, I don't need six, right? I only need one person to buy the home and I have all of those folks. So this is how we would speak to our report. Now, how do we send it out? There are a couple of ways that we can send this out. One, you could print it out and you could send it to them. Uh, it does download as a PDF. There is the link on top. I can always copy that and email it to them so that they can view it as the web version as I just saw. And really any other way, you could email them the PDF. You could text them that uh, link and they can view it on their phone. So any way that I wanted to send this presentation to my folks, I can do that from here. And this is how we would use that BMA to win those listings. We draw them in with that HVS. We speak to our buyer market analysis and say, there are people looking for your listing. We sign on that dotted line and boom, we have a new client. And it's really that simple. We didn't go through that much to get here. It was a pretty simple process. So keep that in mind. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. So let's go ahead and start with the Q&A. Uh, Todd. Let's go ahead and get going with some of these questions. Are you there? Sure am. Great Ooh, job. Like a... Perfect. Okay. So it looks like we do have a couple of questions in here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with those. Okay. So effective 5 1, the NAR is creating something called a clear cooperation policy. Um, uh, where exclusive listings have to go into the MLS within 24 hours. Will that be adjusted here? You might want to check into this. Uh, yeah, that's a great note. Um, that's something I'll have to take up with the uh, with our account manager that handles your brokerage. Gotcha. Okay, so next is which one of those estimates that we saw on top is most accurate? So which one of these three estimates is most accurate? You know what, I'll actually take that one because I like the answer to this one, it's actually great. And the point here is that really all of them have variability and all of them are an algorithm in a computer coming up with this estimate. So it, the point isn't that one of them is more accurate than the other. The point is that there is variability in all of them and they will want to and will want to use our expertise as an agent in order to price their listing right. So when we have uh, those listings, when we have somebody that is wants to list with us, we can show them, you know what, these computer generated models are just that, they're estimates. So we'll want to price our listing based off of expertise and how much you think, as the agent you think, should go into it. Should, should that listing be priced for so it doesn't spend too much time on the MLS and they get a good price for it and it gets sold. That's the point is we can show them that and then they can sign on that dotted line. So now we have a new seller client. Great question. 
Okay, Todd, does this also work for vacant lots? Vacant lots, yes, I, yes, it does. That's it. Vacant lots and residential properties. Very good. Okay. Would this be used uh, for a pre listing presentation sent to the seller, or would you use this when they are uh, actual when you are actually with the seller? Um, it's a little shade of gray there in that question, but you would use this um, when you're with the seller, ideally. Uh, we actually have a great article in our help center um, that shows you how to speak to it when you are with the seller. But um, once you get that seller lead and you get that meeting with them, that's when you want to bring this uh, with you to the meeting. Great question. Yes, and the yet yeah, you can use it when you're actually with the seller, or if you're trying to win that listing, we'll want to. We can also use it then. So if you're doing a pre-listing presentation, trying to win a seller, and you do your CMA, and you do, you can also do your buyer market analysis and say, hey, you know, this is something that I can offer you that most other agents can't. So go ahead and throw that in there. Throw it into your presentations. Use it as, as that tool to win particular listings or to get those meetings with those folks so that you can show them the actual buyers. So any way that you wanted to use this, whether it is in front of the person or if you wanted to grab their attention. Now, remember, a lot of this information is on that home valuation site. So they can run that report. We can send that out and that's fishing for those new leads and they can come to you through that home valuation site. But if you know of somebody that is looking to buy or sell and you have this report for them, for their particular house, you could either send them the home valuation site, which will give them again, a lot of that great information, or we can send them the BMA as a complement to our CMA as well and win that listing. So. Great question. In our MLS, we cannot use coming soon. Great question. So in the MLS, it doesn't let us do coming soons. And that is, um, I think I might have not explained that great. So what I mean by coming soon is that it hasn't hit the MLS yet. So in the MLS, it's not gonna show coming soon listings, but when something is ready to get to the MLS, or let's say you're waiting on your photographer to get to that listing. So we're, it, we're ready for this to hit the MLS, but it hasn't quite gotten there yet. Well, we'll still want to get some of that attention. So I can go and ha add that listing into my dashboard so that I can see those listings. You'll have your coming soon listings here, down here, so that folks in your brokerage can start to search for that listing. So now we've got some attention garnered for this before it even hit the MLS. So now we've got people that can start seeing it immediately. We can get that listing sold even sooner. So we can do those coming soons and we can do those non-MLS sort of quiet listings um, here in buy side so that we can get that attention before it gets to the MLS. Great question. Again, we're gonna do a webinar on that in a couple of weeks. So if you wanted to check that page out again and sign up for that webinar, we'll go into more detail about how that works. Uh, are your webinars recorded uh, and how can I, get last week's webinar? Great question. Yes, they are recorded. Um, we are putting all of our webinars on the Buy Side YouTube channel, uh, which you will be, you'll see both of these up a little bit later today. So if you wanted to go in and check that out, so you can view all of those past webinars, you can see it on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, could the article be shared within the this webinar session? Um, yes. So Todd, if you wouldn't mind going to find that, uh, Help Center article that you just referenced. If you could throw it in the chat box so that people can use that, that would be wonderful. Sure thing, doing that right now, Tom. Thank you. Okay, how are uh, how are these buyers put into the back end, and do they have buyer agreements with agents? So the featured one, uh, or is it through captured internet behavior? Good question. So that. Let's go back to our page here. So this, all of this information where it's a 1.2 billion, that's online activity. So those are clicks, right? And a lot of these are as well. Um, but we're gonna go into a little bit more detail, but just to show you what, where these are um, and what that looks like, those six people on the bottom, those are folks within the brokerage. So when people are putting in those buyers, when they have a buyer agent, when you get linked with somebody on the MLS, all of that's gonna go into buy side. So when you have an active listing on the MLS, it'll be under your listings. When you have a buyer on the MLS, it'll be under your listings. You can also add in those buyers. Uh, here, so that if you have new folks that haven't been associated with you on the, uh, the MLS just yet, you can still have those. Uh, and those are actual people with an agent that 
can be contacted. And we'll show you again in a little uh, uh, in a little while, or excuse me, in another webinar where those are. Just to show you where they are, we could go to my buyers or my listings and see those potential buyers. So if I go to my listings, I can check out this particular listing that I just put up, that 1352 Kathy Court, and it'll show me a lot of those um, buyers. Again, this is a demo account, so it's not gonna have any in there, but they would be up here. So you can see there'll be a graph and there will be um, buyers down here. So you can actually see real people with agents. Okay, is there a way to share this on social media? Great question. Yes, um, you can share this on social media. Again, the, the link right here up on top, uh, I can just copy and paste that into my Facebook or if I wanted to use that as a link to, for, to get people to see it. Um, again, this is a PDF. So any way that you wanted to share that, you can. So if I wanted to show a listing uh, and show those potential buyers and all of that great stuff on my social media, yes, you absolutely can. I have to do home valuation tool on Facebook. I think that question is, can you use the home valuation tool on Facebook? And yes, absolutely you can. Um, just to show you really quickly how to do that, uh, we'll go to our marketing suite and our home valuation site, uh, and you can share that on social media. There is a little button there, and we can share that directly from buy side. So if I wanted to do Facebook, if I wanted to do LinkedIn or Twitter, uh, however you like to share those, yes, absolutely you can. Okay, Todd, how do I see the questions being asked from potential prospects? Is that from potential prospects? Is are, are you, I'm assuming they're referring to the uh, leads that you generate from the home valuation site. Uh, Tom will show you. Or are we oh. talking about these leads on the, we kind of got into a few different topics here. If you're looking at yeah. selling generated by your home valuation site, this is where you're gonna see them, where Tom just clicked on the My Leads uh, section. Um, another question that we get, which you might have been referring to back to the BMA, Tom. Um, these buyers, I don't know if that's what the question was, but these buyers are represented by agents in your brokerage, so you won't be able to see their contact information, but you can search that buyer ID in the app and you'll see the name of that agent. You'll be able to reach out to the agent that represents that buyer in app. So I don't, the question could have been either one, but I figured I'd answer, answer both. Okay, Tom, if you need any more. Sorry? I, I was gonna say, I think you just added a little more cl clarification. It's from the home valuation model. So yeah, so that's where we were coming here. So we go into our marketing suite, you go to my leads, and those people that have interacted with that home valuation model that you've done, that will be down here. So you can see those leads, if they've got questions, if they've emailed you, uh, if they just reached out for a contact, you can see all of those people that have interacted with your report. Does this link with our local L uh, MLS, there we go, Real Scout, or both uh, when you are showing the six buyers at the bottom of the page? So where are those buyers pulling from, Todd? Those buyers are, like I said, represented by uh, agents in your brokerage. They are either added manually. Um, occasionally, buyer leads are, depending on what your brokerage has hooked up, we pull buyer data from different platforms like Real Scout and uh, sometimes Realtor.com and, and Zillow, save searches from Zillow. Um, yeah, but like I said, these there buyers you. are represented by an agent in your brokerage and we make it pretty easy. I, that's one thing I think we should go over to Tom with the BMA is how to look up those buyer IDs. This is a question that I get frequently. So we'll copy that buyer ID, go back up to the uh, dashboard and then uh, on top, the top menu over find, find buyers. And then to the left, we're gonna change the criteria we're shipping by. So click the drop down button. We're gonna click buyer ID, paste the buyer ID in, and then hit, right, hit search. And then to see the agent, we'll click on that buyer ID again, up top, and you'll see that it's represented you see the agent to the right so it's represented by by alan agent <laughs> this is just a demo yeah. <laughs> okay 
So that is if we're looking up that particular buyer. So how we can find those people. Correct. Very good. Are the six people working with agents? I think we answered that question already. Um, and yes. will you know the potential buyer's name? If we have that name, yes, uh, we can see that full profile down here, um, but we can always reach out and contact that agent as well. We won't show the buyer's name. That's one thing we wanna emphasize is that your buyers are your buyers and they belong to you only. So that's why we only give you the buyer's agent and not their name. A lot of people are concerned yeah. that their buyer data might be might be being shared with other agents of the brokerage, but it is not. You are the only one who could see it. Just a little clarification. Some people get take that. You know, everybody should take that seriously. Gotcha. Perfect. Um, okay, are potential buyers linked uh, to this through any mobile app or property tracker systems used by buyers? Again, I think we briefly answered that one already. This might be a question that was asked previously, but yes, they they are linked through all of those different sites that Todd listed off just a few minutes ago um, uh, in all those different places. So yes, they are. All right. Okay, so the last question we have here is just to clarify the data uh, for a, uh, actual buyers in my brokerage is pulled from the company website, local MLS, and Real Scout. Is it that was asking if they are? Yes. Uh, well, that varies by. By brokerage, I, we won't be pulling from the MLS, um, but it, like I said, it varies by brokerage. Uh, if you wanted to send an email to support at Get Buy Side, our support team could look up the exact uh, sources of the data. We'll get that information to you. Absolutely. Perfect. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We do have a number of uh, webinars left. So we've got two more that, um, excuse me, four more that we have scheduled out. So go ahead and check out our webinars page uh, and sign up for those. And we will see you next week talking about your dashboard, uh, how to see and interact with those uh, listings and buyers. Uh, and a lot of other great information so how many people have valued your house or done the home valuation and a lot of other great stuff so thank you very much and we will see you next week